Hey everyone, if you're here to learn good news, we're gonna get there in just one second. Uh, just a quick note though, I'm gonna show you how to play this in the key of G primarily, because that's what we do it in when a female leads it at our church. But primarily, this song is based around D shapes, and so you can scale this and move it anywhere. So if you wanna play in the original key, the key of F, you would just capo three and play those same D shapes. If you wanna do it even lower, and like just in standard D, you can do that as well. So wherever you wanna do this, um, my instructions should be pretty movable. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an overview of uh, the song first, uh, just a part of it, because there's a lot of repeats. I'll show you that in a, in a moment. And then I'm gonna break it down part by part, something I don't normally do and probably won't always do in the future, but for this song, we're gonna break it down part by part. So we're gonna jump into it in one sec, but if you are watching this video and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I really would appreciate uh, if you would just go ahead and subscribe. I know it's a little thing, but it really does help the channel as a whole. You can like the video, drop a comment, all that stuff as well. I'm very responsive, would love to chat with you, and then would love to invite you over to my Instagram page where, again, I'm responsive, I love this community, and I wanna help this community, and so I offer balanced content of biblical encouragement and musical craft uh, tone tips and tricks and stuff like that over on my Instagram. And then my website has a blog and it's got a whole bunch of resources. I just released my first uh, Tonex pack and uh, more to come on that. And this song features those Tonex captures. Also have my Strymon presets available on my website. All of that blesses me and helps me out tremendously. So I encourage you to check that out. One last thing before we get into it. At the very end of this video, I have a devotional on this idea of good news. I really, really want you to listen to that um, that devotional. I, I poured my heart into it. I really feel like it's a message that's important for this community. And so after you're done learning the song, if you would take a moment, uh, sit back. It's a little bit longer, but you can get through it. And uh, just be encouraged by this word. I think it will, and I think it'll be worth your time. So anyway, love and appreciate you, truly do. And uh, I hope this song blesses your church, and I hope this tutorial helps you prepare for it. So let's dive in. Alright, so I'm actually going to stop right there because honestly the rest of the song is just repeating those ideas. So I'm, I just want to break down the individual parts to this. 
um, and then again show you how you can play it in the different keys. But uh, let's just break down uh, the lead line intro. And so again, if you're capo five playing in D shapes, it just starts on a D like this. Now there are times much later in the song where they move up an octave, and if you do that, you can start on the 15th fret. There's also times where they start low and then end high, so you can go like this. You can also play with that. You can do some hammer-ons and some other things. But I hear little themes like that um, at different places in the song. So you can play with those ideas. And then the verse is very simple. It's just this there's just one little line that goes like this. And that's just on the 12th fret on the G string hammering onto the 14th, and then getting the B string on the 12th fret. And if you wanted to add in something like that, there is a dotted eighth note delay that I have dialed up here, and so you can play around with that if you'd like. Then the very first chorus uh, uses a chorus effect, um, and so I've got that going on on the Mobius. First half of that chorus just kind of swells in, and I'll give you a closer look on these shapes in just a second. It goes like that. So the first chorus uses the, the chorus effect on the Mobius, but then the remainder choruses uh, don't use that effect, but the, the, basically the fingering of it is all the same. So let me just show you kind of the main chorus fingering and then you can kind of go from there. This is the first one. Second one. Third one. The fourth one is the same as the first. And then it goes up here. For the fifth. That's the sixth shape. So all together, and it kind of does this uh, kind of a rhythmic thing. So that's the first time it goes through it. And the second time, it uh, varies it up a little bit. It goes like this. back to the turnaround or whatever that is. So those shapes are like this. So shape one is similar. Shape two is the same. Shape three is the same. And then and there's this shape. It's basically seventh fret, ninth fret, 10th fret on the D, G, and B string. And then this shape. Oh, sorry. So it's the 10th, 12th, and then open like that. So this is how it goes. And then it goes back to this. So let me show that to you in context.
then basically that's the majority of the song. So that's all the song. Uh, it continues. The the bridges have that same thing. The refrains have the same thing. Th then there's a breakdown chorus where it doesn't even play that cool chorus part that you just learned. More refrains, interlude. So it's kind of it's kind of those all those pieces are the same. Now again, if you wanted to play this in the original key, the key of F, just take your capo down. And so D shapes, capo three is the key of F. So that if you want to play it higher, just start on the 13th fret. And then same idea with the choruses. You got it from there again you could take the capo off and play open d shapes but this song is very movable in that way if you play if you kind of embrace uh the d shapes for this song you really can cover a wide range of keys so that no matter who's leading it a male who doesn't sing that high or even a female you can kind of stay in the same d shape home bass if you will so i hope that was helpful to you as you prepare to lead this song for your church Hey, thinking about uh, the song Good News by Maverick City, I just have a few thoughts that I would love to share with you about this idea of the good news and the gospel. We are living in the moment of the best news in human history. Okay, think about it. If you zoom way out and go back to that first moment in the garden where the first bad news, right, was given to Adam and Eve, that their choice to release their trust in God would result in their fractured relationship with him. Ever since that moment, God has been working towards restoration of his people back to him, right? He's been working to restore good news. And though God certainly gave his people countless little doses of good news along the way, remember his promise to Abraham, rescuing them from Egypt, uh, giving them the laws to show them what was right and wrong, sending the prophets to guide them back to truth time and time again. But the best news was still waiting in the shadows for just the right moment. And so after thousands of years of waiting and searching and stumbling and yearning and hoping, God finally delivered the true good news that he was planning from the beginning. And when God finally did arrive to earth as a baby, the first people who received this message of good news, obviously besides Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph, but the first to hear of Jesus' actual arrival were the shepherds. Dirty, low-level, outcast, spiritually unclean, last place, bottom of the barrel shepherds. And remember what the angel said to them? It's found in Luke 2.10. It says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. These shepherds were the first people to hear about the long awaited anointed one, the redeemer of Israel, the son of God. And this is so important to God that these kinds of people were the first to hear about the good news because the good news is all about redeeming the brokenness in the world and flipping the script of what is deemed good and what is deemed worthy. Now, this good news, euangelion in the Greek, is something that would be echoed throughout all of Jesus' ministry and actually carried forward by his disciples for generations and generations, all the way to now through you and I today. So, what is this good news exactly? I gave you a little preview before. But Jesus defines it himself, if you turn just a few pages, in Luke 4. And Jesus gets up uh, to preach one of his first sermons in the synagogue, and he opens the scroll to Isaiah and reads these words, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then 
Jesus spent the next three years doing these very things. Think about it. Blessing the poor. Uh, he, he gave them a different kingdom reality to see, to see their lives through. He helped them see their poverty as a blessing because they're not trapped in the hamster wheel of the world like the rich are. He helped the poor see that in their poverty, they actually get the chance to value the right things in life. Relationships, dependence on God, humility, patience. So he blessed the poor. Now, he also uh, he also set the prisoners free. He freed the prisoners. Prisoners of greed, prisoners of anger, prisoners of unforgiveness, prisoners of hate, prisoners of bodily dysfunction, literally healing sickness and leprosy and paralysis and deformity and demon possession. He also gave a recovery of sight to the blind, both physically and spiritually. He gave sight to people who were so blinded by their own presuppositions of who they thought God was, or were so blinded by their family upbringing, or so blinded by their past experiences or hurts. Jesus came and gave them clarity. He opened their eyes to see God for who he truly is. Working down the list, he also set the oppressed free. He set people free from the oppression of addiction, bondage to a substance or a habit that was keeping them from real life. He also set people free from corrupt governments, but not with a sword to fight their way out, but with a peace that transcends understanding, to live in the middle of it in a state of contentment. He gave them a citizenship to a different kingdom, one that could be lived out no matter what country they found themselves in or what leader was making the laws. And speaking of laws, he gave them freedom from the law, freedom from the bondage of getting everything perfectly right to the letter, freedom from striving, freedom from religious elitism and control. Jesus gave them all access equally to the same Holy Spirit. Friends, this is good news, right? And so, for Jesus, the euangelion, the good news, is a redefinition of what is best in this life. It's not money or power or status, but it is humility, hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's meekness. It's loving even when it hurts. Uh, the good news is that those who are in last place will be first, and those who serve will be the most treasured. This, this is good news. And the crazy part is that this good news is still available to you and I today. Now, what's better news than all of this? Actually, there is one last thing that tops all of this off. Ultimately, the best news is that the wrath of God towards us is fully satisfied in the death of Jesus, that he perfectly fulfilled the law, living the life we should have lived but couldn't, and dying the death that we should have died but no longer have to. The best news is that you and I, through faith in Jesus, have a security in the kingdom of God now and forevermore through the promise of heaven. And the best news is that you and I can have a chance at true salvation, a chance to return to the garden, a return to the intimacy and the connection with God that was lost since the beginning of creation, but is now restored in the person of Jesus. And so that's what I mean by we're living in the moment of the best news in human history. Of course, maybe that could only be topped off by his second coming. But for now, we really do get to experience this good news. Now, to get really practical as I wrap all this up, as people on praise teams, we literally get to take euangelion, the good news. We get to take this message to the stage and declare it loud and clear through the beautiful and powerful vehicle of music every single week. And when you look at the long history of good news, this has to be one of the most blessed occupations we could possibly have in this life. Actually, if you Look back to Luke 2. What happens right after the good news is shared? What happens is a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel and burst out into song and praise saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. So what happens right after the gospel is shared? Uh, 
praise, singing, glory given to God. And that's just the natural response of good news. And so I want to encourage you to remember your role in that, that you and I are towards the very end of a very long line of faithful image bearers that get the great joy of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And we get to do that with our craft, with our music. And there is no greater opportunity to share that message with the whole world than right now. Because with the rise of internet and social media and the ability for musicians and creatives who are both well-resourced and less resourced to share their craft with the world is easier and more accessible than ever in the history of the world. And we need to be faithful to this call. We need to remind the world that the bad news they consume every single day on repeat is a lie. We need to remind them of the true reality of the kingdom of God, that Jesus is real, he's alive, he's present, he's active, and he's still restoring all things to himself. And we get to do this in part through great guitar tone, right? But more importantly, through great songs that contain the great truth of the gospel. So do not neglect your craft it matters and you have been charged to use it fully for his kingdom and his purposes. But also remember that for the good news to be good news, you might have to get dirty sometimes. You might have to lower yourself. You might have to bless the poor. You might have to love those who hate you. You might have to live generously. You might have to die to yourself. But the good news is, is that when you and I do this, we will truly live. That's Jesus' promise. And so that's my prayer for this community, that we would learn to live out the gospel with all of our heart and with a dedication to our craft, all for the glory of God. So blessings to you as you share and live out the good news this week.